flail chest guys let's look at flail chest what do you exactly mean by this word flail so flail actually means this kind of equipment see it kind of looks like a broken stick isn't it so flail flail chest so the ribs are broken okay so let's look at this image here so the ribs you can see are broken and there are kind of floating kind of pieces here you can see that there are this piece is floating 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 and these floating pieces do something weird when the person is inspiring they remain behind the whole chest expands they remain behind when the person expires i mean he's not going to die when he's uh, he's breathing out breathing out so when he's breathing out the chest is moving in correct and that time these pieces pop out this is kind of weird so this is called as some paroxysm sorry what did i say paradoxical breathing so this is because of severe chest injury so there is multiple rib fractures there are four or more ribs at two places so these segments will have no attachment to the chest wall this is what you should understand understand there will be instability while breathing in and breathing out what happens to the segment of these ribs they become indrawn when the patient inhales it's going in the rib uh, those pieces of ribs but the whole uh, chest wall has to come forward right in inhaling and uh, when you're expiring what will happen uh, when you're breathing out <clears throat> your chest will go back right that time these pieces will are driven out so this is kind of weird so this is called as paradoxical respiration so this will produce hypoventilation carbon dioxide retention and respiratory failure <clears throat> standard things that you write about everything to do with pulmonary system hypoventilation carbon dioxide retention what was the other one respiratory failure very good now let's go here so uh, what are they trying to say in this one so there are so many types of uh, flail chest also anterior posterior and lateral anterior so fracture of the costochondral junction on both sides of the sternum so you know your sternum is in the middle so both sides of it anterior over posterior fracture ribs of posterior chest wall posterior chest wall it's a fracture lateral fracture shaft of ribs okay so <clears throat> if you're looking at a person from front it will be better i think posterior see anterior is somewhere here okay both sides of the sternum posterior here and lateral here okay so there are three three types of flail chest now how will you treat people we have reached the treatment of what flail chest focus now anterior how will you treat seagull shaped prosthesis introduced to stabilize the flail segments so this is very uh, sounds like an orthopedics topic to me flail uh, seagull shaped prosthesis seagull now bring the bird here and let's see the bird so first of all we are looking at anterior right so for anterior only you need to fix so anterior what they have done they have used a seagull wing shaped see it's not the seagull shaped it's more like a wing shape looks like seagull's wing shaped okay fine seagull shaped prosthesis see they have put it here can you see here that they have put so this is the treatment for anterior flail just over seagull shape processes introduced to stabilize the flail segments yes we got it now posterior no treatment is required as the scapula acts oh you have the scapula to protect you your scapula is there at the back okay if you don't know you have two two scapulas <clears throat> so it will uh, act as a support so you just have to probably fix it and everything will be fine right <laughs> lateral flail this is treated by chest wall stabilization reduction of the respiratory dead space manage what is this management of pulmonary contusion and pain control what is this why is lateral getting so much attention people management of pulmonary contusion and pain control epidural anesthesia is recommended for pain management intercostal nerve blocks may also be given why only for lateral you are talking about so much what is this respiratory dead space that is where the exchange doesn't happen it just travels the air is just traveling it is not exchanging so this is respiratory dead space they want to reduce it so that this person will be able to use more of the space to actually have gas exchange okay management of the pulmonary contusion and pain control this guy has a contusion you want to manage it i have a feeling everything looks like a very generic treatment for all the others also because giving analgesia for pain management um then uh, pain control contusion you want to manage all the sounds very generic okay now uh, let's go to the other uh, methods other methods uh, surgical stabilization is rarely indicated open reduction of rib fracture or osteofixation so, like i told you this is a very orthopedic topic okay so you want to do open reduction because you can't reduce it uh, closed right you can't closed reduce it 
So open reduction is being done. That means you are bringing all the bones back into position and then you are doing a fixation so that they don't go back to the abnormal position. Okay. Recent method is to intubate and stabilize the flail segments with positive pressure ventilation. So recently what they are trying to do instead of opening up the, the person with surgery and fixing and reduction and all what they are doing is intubate this person. That means he is not going to breathe by himself. You are going to ventilate. Right. <coughs> and you are going to stabilize this flail segments with positive pressure ventilation. From inside they are putting pressure looks like from through the lungs and they are trying to stabilize the flail segments. Okay. But at least one week, what is this? Has to be done at least one week. Has to be done for at least one week. <clears throat> this is called as pneumatic fixation. Has to be done at least for one week means what? The whole week he is going to be intubated and ventilated. So one whole week he can't breathe by himself. Physio uh, I mean that's a question mark. Physiologic stabilization uh, with intubation and IPPV. So IPPV that is internal pos uh, fixation, sorry, positive pressure, right? Ventilation must be initiated. Why Why they are saying this? Because these people can have respiratory problem, right? Respiratory failure can develop because they are having paradoxical respiration. So first thing you should do, they are saying is you should stabilize the person with intubation and IPPV before hypoxia develops, you should do this. So then why didn't they write it first? Then you should move it up. What is IPPV? Positive pressure ventilation, but what is I? This is intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Okay, intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Okay, <clears throat> IPPV produces satisfactory ventilation and helps the fractured ribs to unite in the position of inspiration. So inspiration, anyways, it will expand. So at that position, all these uh, fractures and all will um, <clears throat> they they even the fracture ribs will unite also. That's nice. Thereby reducing the deformity and improving pulmonary function. Okay. So this is all about the treatment of flail chest. So can we summarize flail chest means what? Basically flail is this kind of an instrument where it's kind of a broken rod it looks like to me. So basically because of chest injury, multiple rib fractures, there'll be certain segments of the ribs which have no attachment to the chest wall. These uh, will uh, remain uh, attached to the lungs when there is inspiration and the chest expands. But when there is expiration the ch and the chest goes back, these fragments will come forward causing paradoxical respiration. So this is instability. It will lead to hypoventilation, carbon dioxide retention and respiratory failure. So there are three types. You have anterior flail, posterior flail and lateral flail just according to the name. Same anterior, posterior, lateral. Anterior means how will you fix? <clears throat> anterior means you can use the seagull wing type of a uh, prosthesis and anterior you can stabilize. Posterior means no treatment is required because the scapula is there to help you and support you in your life. You have two, two scapulas, each on, one on the left and one on the right on your back. Lateral flail, uh, anyways, they are telling you, you have to reduce the dead space, pain control, etc. Now, coming to the other methods, uh, basically, they said that uh, surgical stabilization is rarely indicated. Then let's move it down. <coughs> so, what you should do is, they are telling is, you intubate and you stabilize the flail segments with positive pressure ventilation. So, what will happen from inside, you will um, uh, blow it up kind of a thing. So, um, there will be internal pneumatic fixation. Now what happens here is uh, uh, all this you should do before hypoxia develops because you can understand that person is going to go into respiratory problem, right? So um, what else? Uh, if all this doesn't work, you can also do an open reduction. Open that person and reduce the fracture and osteofixation. Osteofixation, okay. That's it people. So we are done with the uh, flail chest. Bye-bye.